I'm Nelson Davis, executive producer of Making It. A lot of ambitious entrepreneurs live by this phrase. Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Accordingly, a genius is often merely a talented person who has done all of his or her homework. But do you know who said that? You well, know, if you guessed one of the greatest inventors of all time, Thomas Edison, then you get to go to the head of the class. Not only does his wit and wisdom live on, so does a company that is his namesake, Southern California Edison. Today, we're taking a look at how that company is helping the communities it serves through the power of partnerships. Making It, featuring inspiring personal stories of struggle, triumph, and success from America's small business communities. Hello and welcome to Making It. I'm Lynette Romero. And I'm Emmett Miller. Linda Stone came to the U.S. from the Philippines with $350 in her pocket and a dream. She wanted to become a teacher, but she changed her mind when she saw an area that held even greater promise, computers. She completed courses at UCLA and IBM and became a computer programmer. It was a skill that not many people had in the early 1980s. She soon realized that this was an ability in high demand by many companies, so she began seeking out others with similar skills to hers, and she started a temporary employment firm. Today, she considers her partnership with Southern California Edison as key to her company's success. Correspondent Errol Smith has more. When I was working with uh, my, uh, at one of the airspace companies, they, um, the people I work with are making more money than I was. So that's how I became an independent contractor because I, I'm doing the same thing as I was doing as a full-time employee. I made more money, I doubled my salary. And my, the company I worked for asked me to bring in some more programmers under my company name. So Linda, what do the letters APR stand for? Accuracy, promptness, and reliability. Linda, you made a deliberate decision to start growing the company. What challenges were you facing that made you decide to start moving in that direction? Well, first of all, I have to stop doing consulting work. I had to make a decision. I went to UCLA Management for Business Entrepreneurs Program, Man uh, Entrepreneur Development Program of some sort. And my instructor told me, you have to make a choice. Run your company full time or you stay in the technical field and hire somebody to run it full time. That's when I have to make a decision. But I said, I have faith in this company and I'm going to do it. In a way, this is really a family business. Tell me what roles your other family members play in the company. I started out by myself. And I talked my husband in supporting me in, and helped me in the back office. Now he's the CFO. And um, Aaron, our son, was uh, helping us when, while he was going to college. And when he finished, I asked him what his plans are. Does he want to be involved with APR? He said, yes. So now he is the manager in Irvine. And he's looking after Dallas and Atlanta. My son, uh, Jason, he has his own company. Uh, Kwan, our foster daughter, she works for us in the accounts payable department. Her husband is our security specialist, one of our son who wants to be in the acting business. So he's a starving, no, a striving actor. So tell us, how did your relationship with Edison begin? Well, uh, they had a uh, supplier diversity manager. Her name was Diana Robertson. When I, uh, I attended a Minority Business Opportunity Day sponsored by uh, Southern California Regional Purchasing Council, she was a speaker there. And she said, we are open. We have a program for minority suppliers and go ahead and sell to the clients. And we've been doing business with them for over Oh, I think 20 years now. I have to mention I have learned quite a bit on how to run my business but through SCE program. 
and I have uh, been working with SCE quite a bit in learning how to manage my financing, strategic planning, name it. Do you think your company would have grown as it has if it were not for your involvement with Edison? Uh, not as much, I don't think, uh, because I, like I said, I didn't have business sense. I learned a lot, and uh, SCE is really very, have a very positive um, program for small businesses. So you project the company will do $50 million this year? Yes, we're, we're still targeting it. And you may be shy, but I understand you're pretty stubborn and you don't believe in credit. Uh, no. I almost quit when I was uh, uh, diagnosed of cancer. And um, I thought I should just enjoy life and forget all these stressful things and I should quit working. I just sell my company and, and move on with my life. But I thought, why am I doing this? What will I do once I survive? And instead of quitting, I decided to open two more companies. So when you look back, what do you think it is about you that enabled you to start with $350 and grow a company to being on the verge of making $50 million a year? Well, I, I guess I don't really see the risk. I, uh, I don't see the negative things. I'm very positive. I'm always optimistic. So you're growing the business now. Look out five years and tell me what you see for the company. Uh, we want to be as big as those big staffing companies. I want to be national. And I have started doing that by opening new offices outside California. See, now that's incredible. She was diagnosed with cancer and had so much faith in herself, she went and opened up two more companies? What am I going to do after I survive? That's it, that's after important. I survive. That's important. Well, she's already turning a major corner. APR's projected revenues for this year will be over $50 million. That is the benchmark which takes her out of the category of special small business programs and into the big leagues. As you just saw, APR is a family affair. Many entrepreneurs dream of one day passing their business down to their kids. Perhaps that's what you're envisioning. But how do you make it a reality? In Secrets of Success, Rachel Owens tells us how. You had a dream that led to a passion that is now your own business. If you're like most of our clients, you also have the dream of bringing your family members into the business and passing it on to them one day. But how do you turn this dream into a reality? There are three main things your children will need to succeed. First, an education that teaches them to learn and adapt to the ever-changing business climate. Second, the right skill set to take the business to the next level. This is probably different than the skills you had when you started. Finally, outside work experience. This allows them to demonstrate competency and success away from the family business. Commit these ideas to writing. We call them family participation guidelines. These guidelines clarify the requirements, opportunities, and rewards for family members. Sharing these expectations in advance can be the catalyst to a successful family business. And for more tips, you can reach Rachel Owens of Succession Strategies at succession-strategies.com. And watch streaming video or uh, more Secrets of Success on our website, makingatv.com. And they're saying JC, they're praising JC, and they're saying turn down the AC, how a church learned to save cash by saving energy. That's when we return. In the spirit of small business, Making It is being brought to you by Southern California Edison. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. By the Boeing Company. And by Comerica Bank. We listen. We understand. We make it work.
It's what you make of it. Yes, right? it is. Right? It's yes, what you make of it. Is. Welcome back to Making It. Today we're talking about the power of partnerships, specifically how Southern California Edison is throwing their power into partnering with two very different enterprises. The first Church of God in Inglewood, California, is definitely in partnership with the community they serve. The church has over 30 ministries, including an elementary school. And with so many different programs, Bishop Gregory Dixon is always looking for ways to cut costs. Since conserving energy means conserving cash, Bishop Dixon turned to Edison for help. Through a program that serves small businesses, the church was able to save 25 to 30 percent on their electric bills. Here's how they did it. The first Church of God has been in the city since the early 1900s. In 1985, the Center of Hope was erected in Inglewood. Bishop Gregory L. Dixon has been senior pastor since 1996. He's recently been working to enhance the conditions of the church for his congregation. We've improved the facility in terms of upgrading air conditioners and we're doing some major uh, work in terms of changing rooms and adjusting their purpose so that uh, our church becomes more uh, community friendly. Um, if you had come a few months ago, the, the building was a different color. If you had come a few months ago, um, you wouldn't see quite as much green as you see now. So we've done a lot of work and we're still in the process of changing and upgrading. Uh, we're involved in a two-year program to really try to give a good facelift, try to position us to go into the future. And uh, so that's what we're involved in. Pastor Dixon is enthusiastic about how the implementations have already helped reduce energy bills. We've been involved in this about six months. Initially, we've, we've seen a 25 to 30 percent drop in our costs. And that's understanding that rates do increase. But we would have been in worse shape if they had not come through and begin to evaluate what we're doing. So uh, our business office tells us that uh, the savings were immediate in terms of that first month or two. We saw a 25 to 30 percent drop, which is a good thing for a congregation of our size. Have a church that very seldom are we really shut down. We go from 6 or 7 a.m. in the morning to 10 or 11 at night every day and it's a full operation so you can imagine the cost of operating the various rooms and the facility and, uh, so that was a, a extreme benefit for us to be able to, to, have, to experience that kind of savings but the suggestions weren't only about buying new equipment when they came in to do the assessment they gave us some things that we could do they're just practical suggestions about how we could shut off certain portions of the building and just some things that would help us in the overall process. Everything is not about efficient light bulbs. Some things are about patterns of behavior. Uh, some things are about things that you do sometimes without thinking uh, that they brought to our attention that we needed to be aware of. So we've, we've tried to put those things into effect and we see good results from it. David A. Ford, account executive for Edison's African-American business and faith-based customers, assisted Bishop Dixon by recommending several options. We have um, quite a lot of different programs and services, and we're continuously looking at ways in which we can enhance our total customer experience. Two programs that come to mind that I think are really important in helping businesses reduce their energy costs one is our business incentive and services program and that provides rebates for our customers in lighting, window film, air conditioning, refrigeration equipment that they would upgrade or replace to more energy efficient equipment. The other program is our demand response programs that allows customers to uh, shed load to reduce their operations at certain peak times such as the summer discount program. Basically what that program does is allow us to turn off your compressor part of your air conditioning unit when we call for interruptions and generally these interruptions occur during the summertime if we need to have an interruption and it would be for a certain period of time in the afternoon but it allows us to continue to provide service and reliable power to our customers. Mr. Ford gives us some insight into Edison's in-depth look at this church through their on-site audit. We're here in a church. The church uses a tremendous amount of lighting, 
during the weekly services and Sunday morning, as well as air conditioning to keep the atmosphere in the church and heating to keep the atmosphere in the church uh, comfortable to their membership when they have services. So we can look and assess different areas of energy conservation based on uh, the uh, visual or, or actual information that we have identified in the church during our audits that we pass on those recommendations to the church uh, that will enable them to come in more energy efficient. And what will Edison's relationship with the First Church of God be like in the future? I think that we'll be able to expand on some programs and services that we can offer to this church. I've identified some additional opportunities here that I think that they can save on, such as window film, uh, possibly changing out some other lighting systems in their gymnasium, and other areas of the church that I think will have seen further development of cost reduction in their program, uh, in their operational costs here at this facility. And you can take a free online business energy survey to learn how you can cut costs. It's at the Edison website, and we'll give you more information about that coming up later in the show. And coming up next, our studio guest is Lisa Cagnolotti, director of the Customer Communications Organization, Southern California Edison. She'll tell us more about what Edison's doing to help small businesses when we come back. And you can reach Linda Stone of APR Consulting at www.aprconsulting.com. And you can contact Bishop Gregory Dixon at the First Church of God. Their website is www.firstchurchofgod.com. And now let's turn things over to Emmett, who's in the studio with a very special guest. Emmett. Thanks, Lynette. Lisa Cagnolotti is the Director of Customer Communications at Southern California Edison. She's responsible for the call center operations. They field more than 12 million customer calls annually. Lisa Welcome to Making It. Thank you very much. All those customers, so many questions. What are the bulk of the questions that come in for you guys? Most of the calls come in about the customer's bills. Um, they're making sure that the bills are accurate and that they understand the bills. Sometimes customers have trouble paying the bills, so they will ask us for um, payment arrangements and that kind of thing. But the bulk of the business is really about turn-ons and turn-offs, just general electric service kinds of questions. What does your call center really do for small businesses? Um, we're an information center pr uh, primarily. Um, we have a group of representatives that are specially trained in dealing with commercial and industrial customers. And so those customers are routed um, to those representatives and they can give them information on energy efficiency, um, basic anything to do with their electric service, they can get that information from the call center. Is that one of their main concerns, energy efficiency? What are they really worried about? Absolutely, because energy efficiency plays right into how a business manages its energy costs. Um, they want to make sure that they're using energy as efficiently as possible so that they're not wasting any of their precious resources. What are some of the best ways for them to do that? Uh, primarily, we like uh, to uh, encourage customers to take advantage of the energy efficiency rebate programs, for example, because oh, those are great. so easy to access. If you go to www.sce.com, there's information on all of the energy efficiency programs. They're very simple to apply for. We try to make it very user-friendly for the customers, and there's just there's such a variety of programs. We don't have time to go into all of them here today, but it really is a lot for, to help the customers out. But you'll take as much time as possible, as much time as they need on the phone, taking Absolutely. them through every aspect of their business, taking them through everything that they need to do, and showing them how they can best save on the energy costs. On the energy costs, absolutely. And we will refer the customer to specialists within our company who, for example, could come out
out and do an on-site energy audit for the customer, um, or we would direct them to further services that are for them on the internet where they can get applications for services and, and uh, rebates. Now, I know we were talking to Bishop Dixon earlier mm -hmm. and some of the ways that he deals with uh, Southern California Edison, but the Express Efficiency Program is something that he could probably take advantage of. What What is that and how does that work? That is a wonderful program. It offers cash incentives for customers that are replacing certain types of equipment like lighting, refrigeration, air conditioning. And the equipment just has to qualify as high uh, efficiency equipment. And we offer you know cash incentives. And customers love that because it helps them to defray the cost of replacing the equipment. Is it a lot of cash? Is it a, a rebate on their bill kind of thing? How does that, how does um, it work? Usually they come in the form of rebate checks, um, and it's substantial. I mean, customers really appreciate it. It does help them cover the cost, so we, we think it's a great program. And I guess when you're a business, you're using a lot of energy anyway. I Absolutely. mean, you and I at home, it's like they can say, oh, okay, yeah. take out your, uh, your f uh, cell phone charger because it's still drawing when it's right. there, or don't put your computer on sleep. Like, shut down your computer because that's something that's going to draw electricity. When you have a business and you have all those servers running and you have the copier machine running and you got everything else, that's a lot of money. It really is. And, and some of the same things apply to those customers as well, though. If you leave a room, you should turn the lights off. As long as there's comfort, safety, and security for your employees and your customers, which is of primary concern to the businesses, you know, anything that's not in use, like your copiers, your lights, you can turn your air conditioners down. When you close the business at, at night, you make sure that you turn off everything that doesn't have to be on for safety or for continuing the business. And customers can save a lot of money that way. Do a lot of businesses not really know a lot about that? Do they do things like, oh, I didn't know that I could just shut this down and then leave? I, I think we find that to be true too often, just like we do at home, I think. Um, people just don't think that that's a, a money drain. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes the employees rush out the door at the end of the day and forget to turn the lights off or forget to turn certain equipment off, and it does waste resources. Edison also has an online survey. Yes. What's that about? The online survey is another self-service item for the customers to use on the internet, the SCE.com, and it's just a battery of questions that we ask the customer to fill out, such as, what types of equipment do you have at your location? How many hours per day does each piece of equipment run? Um, maybe it'll ask them questions if they could shift the time of use of that equipment. Um, oh, that's a good because idea. Because sometimes we have, you know, time of use rates where sure. it's less expensive, say, at off-peak times. And if the customer could shift their consumption to those times, they can save a lot of money that way. You know, way. this must be invaluable during the summer months, like the little heat wave we had over here. Absolutely. I mean, an incredible amount of money was wasted if Absolutely. you did it the wrong way, especially for businesses. That's right. And I don't think customers realize just how much control they have over how they use their power. And they may not be aware of some of the rate options that we have at Southern California Edison. Do you think that most businesses now, and I'm talking about the larger ones because the smaller ones may not, mm -hmm. most businesses have departments that are specially formed to get in contact with, uh, contact with you guys and, and get this stuff going, uh, rolling? The large customers, or would you call the major industrial and commercial customers, some of them have actually energy managers that work for the company and their entire job is managing the cost of energy. And they have account representatives that they interface with at Southern California Edison and we help them constantly with managing the way they use electricity to save money. Lisa Cagnolotti, nice to know you're doing what you're doing. Thank you. Helps all of us out, I'll tell you. Thank you. Thanks for coming and making it. And we're going to tell you how you can contact Southern California Edison when we come back. Featuring stories from American small business, Making It is being brought to you by Honda, the power of dreams, San Diego Gas and Electric, serving you today, planning for tomorrow, and by Bank of America, higher standards. You can contact Lisa Cagnolotti of Customer Communications at Southern California Edison by calling 800-736-4777. Their website is SCE.com. And this is also where you can take that free business energy survey we were talking about. And the Making It website offers a wealth of resources to entrepreneurs. You can post a picture of yourself and your business or order a copy of today's show. Those benefits and lots, lots more at www.makingittv.com. And that wraps it up for this edition of Making It. I'm Emmett Miller. And I'm Lynette Romero. Join us next time. Here's a final thought. 
once we're pretty sure we're on, totally on the way with this facility and some other things that we're doing, uh, Dave and I are talking about what we can do for the school, which is roughly a mile away from here. Um, it's roughly 4.5 acres, uh, has four major buildings that sit upon it. And even though it is not technically Edison area, here again, the willingness to make expertise available, information available, that will help us even improve that facility.